the life of a young, struggling schizophrenic. So everybody keeps talking about getting arrested. Well, in Seattle, um, there was a tall, fair-skinned blonde lady who would often watch me walk around at night um, up to my shenanigans. I'd just go around the park and sing. And I guess I'd get high and sing and, and play with my stick and whatever. Not, not in a weird way or a sexual way or anything like that. But um, they said if I started spinning that she would arrest me. Except it, it, it wasn't as though it wasn't as though she would like physically arrest me. It was as though she would become part of me and stop me. And she would arrest me from within. This gal was going to cross the street one day and right as I looked at her, I thought, oh, she's gonna get hit, oh God, oh no. And like, as the car would have collided with her, she blinked into existence, still on the sidewalk. I did get arrested in Seattle. Um, one night I was staying out, I was staying at the Salvation Army at Harborview Hall. And I had my walking stick. And I was angry. So with my stick, I drew a line to separate myself from the person working his vehicle and anybody who might be on the sidewalk. And I went out there and I sat still and I called upon all powers of heaven and hell in any spirits listening. I know now not to do that, but when it happened, I ended up like puking and I, I thought I was gonna shit my pants. And Metal came out of the ground. And I, I would just sit still. And things would move around me. And the cops showed up. Because she said I went in there and assaulted her. And that I was brandishing my stick. Bullshit, bitch. Corinne, you're full of shit. You said no matter what, you would still advocate for me, though. To whom? When I was in the cop car, I don't know what become of me. But I spoke words that I felt had importance. I said, I seek immediate shelter, or I seek emergency shelter. And I meant for, like, my mind to seek residence in her body. And she looked at me and said, fuck no, or something along those lines. But she knew what I meant. Maybe it's because she's a sister of the seven Eastern stars. And maybe I'm a Pleiadian and I just don't know it. It's funny. Corinne reminds me of one of the bosses I had over here. But it's funny that many people over here on this side of the state are like exact copies of the people over there. Uh, the worker at La Quinta in, in Auburn is quite similar, quite, quite similar to 
the worker of, I can't now recall because I'm not supposed to say it, but I'm going to say it anyways because fuck it. Uh, he is exactly, like, he's an exact replica of a worker at one of the Motel 6s here. And when I showed up at that motel over in Auburn, he's like, oh, and we actually have the hot, or the pool working. When I stayed at the motel over here on this part of the state, it wasn't working and I was really bummed out. So I thought it was kind of funny that that relayed to both. But anyways, back to my point, when I was arrested, The cop car sat outside the King County Jail for what seemed like ages. I don't know what became of me, but I took off my shoes and my socks. And I pulled my pockets out of my pants. And an old saying, and an old thing is, if you're in jail or prison, your pockets are out. You're for sale. So I wonder what became of me that I was so desperate to sell myself to whatever it may have been. And the funny thing was, I wasn't scared. The longer I was there, the more full of energy I was. It wasn't like the holy energy of the tree of life. No. I actually tried to take control of the jail, and I might have. But the cops, when they were there, they said, okay, we're going to take your fingerprints. I know what it is like to get your fingerprints taken at a police station. I know what it's like. And somebody had an iPhone. It was reminiscent of an iPhone SE3 to 1, or it could have been an older iPhone. And they took my thumbprint. Stupid for them, I don't use my thumbprints on iPhones. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm so paranoid. I'm like, oh, if somebody ever wants to get into my phone, they're just going to take my thumb. So I use different fingers. I remember when the iPhone SE 2 came out. My thumbprints and fingerprints were always changing. Like, it, they just wouldn't work on the phone. But the iPhone SE 3 fixed that problem. Anyways, they, they took my fingerprint and put it on a phone. And I said, they have an iPhone. And then all of a sudden, the, uh, the other cops were like, oh no, there's not supposed to be any electronics in here. And they started looking for it. And then they said again, we're going to take your fingerprint. They took my blood pressure. How stupid are they? Then they put me in a jail cell. And this was back when I would see, I wouldn't say runes or sigils, but like I would see either holy light or dark light. Maybe that's improper. I would see light light or dark light making patterns. And on the ground of my cell, it appeared, at first I just thought it was a circle, but then it seemed to be the emblem of the police, like the police department or some justice department. And coming from one side where the bench was, was like demonic voices. But I don't know what a demon sounds like. I imagine a demon would sound like honey and liquor and everything sweet. Unless they don't want to. Many faced. Oh God, sounds like me, huh? 
But one thing I specifically recall, one of the guards sitting there said, she said, like it was, they, they weren't really making any noise or anything like that. And then all of a sudden, clearly she rang out, evil both wins. Maybe that means that uh, a Gemini who is evil on both sides wins. Maybe it means that I, I really don't know. And then they took me up to a jail cell. I didn't go to general population, no. I was in like a little alcove above a control tower. They'd let one of the guys out and he'd always sweep and whatever. There was tables there. I guess we could have went out and had lunch or something. I don't know. I figured it was because suicide watch, or maybe I was crazy and stupid, or maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I was PC'd because I was so pretty. Or maybe it's because the Washington troopers, when they went to take me to jail here in Spokane, they deemed me mentally unfit to go to a jail. Or maybe it was just that one time. But that, that was an interesting time. They put me in the car. And being a smart ass, I said, no hablo inglés. And we continued to have a conversation. Well, I, I asked them about it. And they said, oh, we quit talking after you said no hablo inglés. And these cops, they were like... The man who appeared at uh, Spokane Falls Community College. One night, I walked up there. And the door opened up, so I walked into the college. And I went in and I sat down. And I turned the TV on. And then, like, it turned on, but it didn't. And my mind just went blank and I sat there. And that guy, he was bald-headed. He came down and his eyes were glowing white. And he said, okay, it's time for you to leave. That night as I left the college, the voices started going crazy saying, oh no, the schizophrenic stole our magic. The schizophrenic learned our magic. The world went crazy that night, it truly did. I kept walking on the street because I felt like walking on the street was the thing to do. I had many cops and like many fire trucks say, get off the street or else you're gonna get hit. Well, a while later, somebody pulled over, jumped out of his car and said, thanks to you motherfucker, I got hit and he hit me in the head. <laughs> and so I did get hit, just not by a vehicle. But when I, when I went to jail, I didn't think anything of it. I wasn't even worried. Like, I knew I didn't assault her. I knew I didn't assault anybody. I don't really remember being in jail for, it was five days. I, I slept. Well, let's be honest. I slept. They would bring food. I woke up. I would jerk off, and then I'd go back to bed. I think I jerked off like three times, so they probably only fed me three times. I don't remember eating, I don't remember using the bathroom, anything like that. Before I went into the courtroom, my attorney told me, whatever you do, don't say anything or else I'll know who you are. Does that mean that I was possessed by something? While I was in that jail cell? Or, 
Or was it like when Conrad would say, oh, don't let Corinne see you in your true form. Because if I would go to Capitol Hill, there would be a me running around on First Hill. And downtown, people saw me everywhere. They always said I made deals with them and agreements with them. Well, before I was called into the courtroom, and there were no electronics permitted, even by the lawyers, anybody. The TV they had on the wall was like fully sealed. And it wasn't even on. They stuck me in a little room. And in my mind, in my perception, in what I believe happened, is they used me to cipher what was going on and like code it. Or they tried to use me to interpret it somehow or another. In every word the judge spoke, I heard many languages. It wasn't like the times I've dreamed of where a person speaks and the whole truth comes out whether they want it or not. No. It was like... It was messy. It, it, trying to... Uh, but the three other people... They, what was really strange is the judge called four of us in the last four of us in at the same time. And every time I've gone to court, I've been in court like for many years, drug court, mental health court, court court, whatever you want to call it. I've been in the courthouse and I've been legally involved. And they always want you to at least say your name say, yes, I am who I am, and they want you to speak it. Well, there, they just, none of that. And they put us, the four of us there, and they said, yeah, 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 yeah. your charges, uh, they, they dropped our charges without prejudice. And like the other three, you didn't seem to know what that meant. They didn't really, I don't know, they just, they weren't sure. But then I spoke and I said, oh, they dropped it with, without prejudice, nice. And they got all excited and they're like, oh, okay. And they seemed to understand. I guess I didn't listen very well. I figured once my charges were dropped, I could speak in the courtroom. The police kept my, uh, my staff though because according to Corinne, it was, a, it was a banned weapon in all the galaxies. And it was a banned weapon in all the worlds and universes or whatever she said. But I fought hard for it, according to the cops. I just emailed them a couple times and said I wanted it back. That stick, though, I... I went into the Pleiades, at the, it's a motel down in Seattle, and I met Finn, he's the dog, and Finn bit my, he bit my shamanic staff, but he left the other one alone, and something strange happened whenever I went somewhere with that staff. People thought that they could no longer leave where they were. Well, at that motel, the Pleiades, a guy came down, one of the guests, he came down to book his room because apparently he had to continue to book his room. And he said, kid, you're so stupid, you don't even know what you're doing. And I, I like, called him out on, like, why would you say that? Like, what do you mean? And the gal was all happy. She's like, oh, you're fine, honey. Just do what you do. But...
it was funny, uh, when Finn bit my walking staff, I, I felt like he was actually protecting me because earlier, a person on the streets, it was a rainy day, it was wet and cold, said, you're going to get, you're going to get frostbite and you don't even know it because apparently I couldn't feel my feet or something. I'm not sure. And, but in my thoughts, Finn biting the staff was taking away frostbite. When I left the jail, or after court, there was a cop that I saw. He used to work in Airway Heights. He used to work in Seattle. He seemed to work wherever I was. And he said, okay, you can do whatever you want as long as you leave the humans alone. And I, I was like, oh, hey, I remember you. Because I, I get weird and like excited over remembering people that I've seen before. And he said, yeah, I, and I remember every time I've met you. And he said, whatever you do, just stay off the streets. Which didn't make sense. I was homeless. Where was I supposed to go? Stay off the streets. Maybe it was a foreboding not to go smoke on the sidewalk. Where a spirit would come. And say, oh, there's no law on the sidewalk. And then take me home and kill me, or try to kill me. Didn't work, though. Maybe that's not the full story, though. But perception is truth, and truth is reality, and reality is perception, and perception is truth and reality. Part of me wishes that I had the balls to get into contact with the Seattle Police Department and press charges against that motherfucker. Even though the police said that I did it to myself. But I wonder if you asked the AMR technician who pushed the spike speck into my back and took my blood pressure at 1,090 beats per minute. I wonder what they would say. Probably the same thing that the hospital would say about the random burn the length of a fully erect penis on my leg is. And how the transport document said I burned my dick off. Or burned the tip of my dick off. It's as though the life from the lives that would have come from my loins fueled me again. And it burned a hole in my leg. I thought maybe it was a quarter or something that fell. I don't believe so. One day riding down the elevator at my old apartment, two cops were there. And I don't know why, but all of a sudden I held my breath. And as I held my breath, one of the cops was exhaling the whole time. 
And after the doors opened, I got off and started breathing again. And the cop spoke to his companion and said, I don't know who he is, but he's from heaven. And they talked about, like, whatever he was trying to do, somehow I knew not to let it happen. I tell my dad these things, and he says, oh, they're just trying to fuck with your head. I'm not sure I can call him my dad, though. One time when my inner shaman was activated, I spoke to him on the phone. And in a sad voice, he said, you're not my son. But maybe I'm just crazy though, because that same persona that overcame me said that they were trying to help me when I was speaking to my mother on the phone. And I was laying towards the TV. And apparently I was blessing it through the TV somehow. And then I turned my back and I cursed it somehow. But that's something that I'm not sure what kind of people they are. But apparently if they turn around and have their ass pointed at you for long enough, they're cursing you. But people have said I have a butt demon. It used to be where... In Seattle, I, I had a cock. And when I had to... When I had to take a shed, I'd close my bathroom door and take a shed. And my cock would, like, freak out and move and, like... At first, I thought I was just going crazy. And then I got a dog, and I just figured the dog was jumping on it. Maybe that butt demon or whatever was stuck in the cot. Which could make sense. My, my current sofa that I sleep on is popping. Like it's coming apart from the inside. Not quite like the dream I had, where something busted open my window. Said, yes, the cameras are in. And then the demons came and attacked me, and I took a hammer, and I slew them. That was one of my nastier dreams. I'd say the nastiest dream I've had was more than a dream. There was a lady I met on the bus on my way home from buying a computer at the pawn shop. She asked me what apartment I lived in and I told her. Well, one night I had night terrors come over me and I tried to leave my bed over and over and I couldn't, but then finally I did. And my knee was all fucked up. My eyeball fell out. And I felt like I just had to leave my apartment. Well, as soon as I opened my door, this lady, there was her and like an exact le replica of her. They took the right hand and reached it into my chest. And she said she was sorry. I've had a dream similar to that twice since I've been here, where I have to try to leave my bed and leave my bed. Well, I leave, I finally make it out of myself. I leave my apartment and I go downstairs 
And it's not quite this realm, but it's similar. Reminiscent or not. And both times on my way out, I've asked somebody for a cigarette. And the person who finally gives it to me says he's not good at all. Or not good at all. And I get frustrated. And I get loud. And then somebody says, oh, he's all about the drama. That's all it is with him is drama. And then I go outside, I smoke my cigarette, and I don't remember the rest. One of the beautiful worlds I've visited. It's everybody's kind of like in trance mode or ritual mode, but they like to sing. And so it's not a cadence or like a tonal series or harmony series that you hear on this earth. But I would always try to sing it, and it wouldn't come out as good as theirs. So one of the younger folks my age finally said, can't you ever just shut up and listen to your music? (laughs) Anyways, I want to thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe, follow, like, whatever it may be, and tune in next time. Thanks, and bye for now.